What's up, y'all? Thanks for stopping by the Search Team channel. Still paranoid Alexandrians get riled up over the whisperers and take their fear out on Negan. At Hilltop, the group deals with an unexpected safety issue. That right there is the synopsis of Season 10, Episode 4, entitled Silence the Whisperers. You know, episode four was very intense. You know, it seemingly was like a quiet night, but then there's a commotion, you know, and there's quiet nights disrupted by a roof collapse, you know, and nine are injured. And, you know, they seemingly are able to get them out of where the tree collapsed into. And uh, it's kind of like they're all just wondering, you know, not even wondering. Some are going, you know, it was a direct attack by Alpha. Some are in doubt. Some are very, very firm in their belief of that. And why, 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 you know, why could, why wouldn't they, you know, after what uh, they've gone through with Alpha? But at the same time, speaking of Alpha, Lydia. Is like treated like an outcast, mainly by three, three Alexandrians who really a girl and two guys, and they really are blunt in her face. And I really didn't like them. It's because the way they were treating her. Yeah, what, guilty by association because her mom is Alpha? When she chose to be with the Alexandrians, right? She chose to be with them. Now, as this is going on, you know, Michonne and her group, you know, are like on the road and they, you know, uh, Michonne notices Zeke. She decides to tell them just to go on ahead while she talks to Zeke. She tails him and he's on a ledge, kind of like uh, off of looking off of a drop off and, um, Kind of looked like he was going to dump, maybe, end it all. He was actually in a, in a mood of where he feels like he failed as a father, failed as a partner to Carol, his kingdom, you know, and all of a sudden in the heat of passion, he kisses Michonne. But then he immediately apologizes and you know, a lot of things happen when <clears throat> when you're just full of emotion, needing some kind of comfort, and kind of he just temporarily lost himself, and and then we go from there to the show. The episode was kind of like went from story to story, from from group to group, and pretty much just spreading out all these different storylines. You know, now. You know, Lydia, because of the what happened with the the three that were kind of, uh, you know, really just really being really um, awful to her. Really, these two, three really want to make her feel like she does not belong. And I'm pretty sure she's not the only, they're not the only ones that feel that way. But these three really were making it an effort to alienate her. And she's there. All of a sudden, Negan is there and kind of talks to her and tells her, you know, like, and why you're letting him get to you, you know? And she's saying that she doesn't want to, you know, smile and take it. But I believe Negan really is pretty much telling her to kind of, you know, tell him kindness. And that's a way to really take power away from people like that. You don't let it affect you. But when they're constantly doing what they're doing to her, it's kind of hard not to, uh, you know, to let it get to you. And, you know, they're together and talking and then Daryl immediately tells her to leave. You know, still no love lost between Negan and Daryl. You know, what happened when Daryl was held prisoner by Negan and there could have been any moment there where, you know, Negan could have killed Daryl. So, you know, it's, it's understandable 
why he doesn't want Lydia to have any kind of a communication, any kind of dealing with Negan. Then we go back to uh, Michonne and Ezekiel and Michonne, you know, she jokes and she goes, you know, it never would have worked out, you know, because we're both too damn stubborn. And uh, I thought that was funny. I thought that was uh, kind of her way of like comforting him and letting him know that it's okay, you know, it happened. And they even confiding in each other and they comfort one another, you know, they show that they're there for one another. You know, have a lot in common, having dealt with, like she even said that she was there where he was, you know. So, you know, feelings mutual kind of a thing. You know? Now we go back and we see in Alexandria, there are walkers and they're pushing a huge tree and it's threatening the integrity of the main wall, you know. And we then see Lydia's way of trying to get back at them by sitting at the table where those three were. Two guys and a girl and a woman. And she's like dissecting or just cutting open a, an animal in front of them. And then she has her hands in blood and then the girl's talking and then Lydia just does what like her mom does, like the whispers do, you know. With her bloody finger up to her mouth, you know. And we're just, one guy's like, yeah, you're a weirdo. You're weirding me out. And later on, Daryl kind of admonishes her and says, you know, you shouldn't do that, especially around the others. And, you know, she pretty much is doing what she feels she needs to do in order to get back at them. You know, to get back at her tormentors. Now, later on, and this is a real pivotal scene, a real, like, changer when it comes to the, you know, the peacefulness and the trust that they may have had maybe with a certain individual but what happens is that the three corner um Lydia and they start beating on her and they're pretty much told the two guys are told by that woman who ends up later on we find out her name is you know Mar Margo they're beating on her and then in comes Nick and he throws the girl off of Lydia and Lydia you know and then Pretty much the one guy goes, you know, hey, we just wanted to put a scare in her. And as soon as one some other one of the other guards comes in, you know, the guy yells out the name of the woman, uh, like I said, Margot. And she ends up, she ended up, I guess she hit her head against the wall so hard that it, that, you know, she cut her open head open and she died immediately. I don't know if there was some nail sticking out that maybe impaled her, but she died. And as you know the group later on you know are, are you know gathered around Sadiq you know has his you know delusions and he hears voices and he's starting to flash back to that day when you know the day when all those um, Tara and the rest of them Henry were killed and it's like PTSD maybe you know and then he proceeds to dunk his face into ice water and he screams while his face is in there like he's trying to just get out whatever is in his head, you know. Then later on, you know, we see Lydia and she's being tended to by uh, Lucidique's assistant. Then her and uh, Daryl have a little talk, you know, and he talks about how her father would have, you know, saved her. Her father would have been there for her, you know. And her and Daryl talk about it a little bit. And then Daryl later on goes to Negan, then they have a talk. Uh, Lydia pretty much says that she, that he, you know, Negan uh, saved her, you know. And the villagers, you know, they're getting restless. And they want Negan to hang pretty much, you know. They want him to pay for what happened. Now, Carol and Daryl, you know, they have a talk. And Carol's like, you know, you wish that we went to Mexico? And Daryl was kind of like, mm, yeah, you know, so maybe none of that would have happened. We wouldn't have had to deal with it, I guess, you know. Now, going back to Hilltop, and they are fighting off a horde of walkers. Now, as they come in and they close the fence, a piece of the fence off to like their right comes down. And I'm thinking, man, they are screwed now. Now, as this is going on, you know, we then see back at Alexandra, there's like some sort of a trial or like a meeting of the council. 
and they're talking to the two dudes and they're straight up lying. I don't understand what the hell they think are, they are coming off saying that, sh that stuff, you know? They're like saying that Negan and that Lydia had them meet, meet you know, meet, meet up, when he met up with them in the dark or something like that. I don't know if they're trying to say that she was luring him there for sex or whatever. I don't know. But, um, you know, they're straight up lying. I mean, we definitely saw it. And while this is going on, Daryl's talking to Michonne, who's back at Hilltop. And she demands that he keep Lydia in Alexandria, because if they let her go, this may kind of turn things towards Alpha's own way. And they don't want to give her any kind of, I guess, uh, any kind of advantage, you know. Now, Hilltop also, uh, you know, they are in a meeting as well. and. They're gonna head back to Alexandria, led by uh, Michonne. And then we see Gabriel knock on the door and informs Daryl that Negan is gone. And then Lydia comes out of her room and pretty much talks to you know, Daryl and Gabriel and says that she let him out and then she locks herself in the cell where Negan used to be. Now, Daryl goes there and says, you know, you know, this isn't the truth. You didn't do this because I was watching the cell all day and uh, all night. And I also was looking at your room and you never left. And she feels that's where she belongs, you know, in the jail cell. Now, it's like, you know, she feels like there's just no winning. As long as she's there, she feels like she's being, you know, looked at as guilty by um, people there in Alexandria. And it's, it's a no-win situation for her. So, hey, why not? I, I belong here. I belong in a jail cell. I don't need to be, you know, letting this thing go on any longer. You know, this is where I belong. You know, Daryl doesn't agree. And Daryl's always there for her, you know. Daryl, you know, and he even believes that Negan didn't do what he did you know and there's even a point where they had a vote and it was knotted up because daryl was a proxy for michonne he said no to dealing with any kind of punishment to meet negan and so gabriel was the deciding vote and he said i'm gonna sleep on it and i'll let you guys know tomorrow you guys should sleep on it too sleep sleep the night and get some rest and then, of course, this was before, you know, Negan ended up, you know, being let out. Still wasn't said, you know, he still didn't say who did it, you know. But, uh, but then, you know, goes back to Hilltop and in Hilltop, a uh, group led by Michonne, we see uh, Lydia, I mean, not Lydia, but Judith and others. And they are headed back out. They're headed out. We're likely going back to Alexandria. Now, back at Alexandria, we see the wall, you know, and we hear the walkers, the horde, of course, you know, and then all of a sudden we hear, they, 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 but all of a sudden, you know, we hear um, the walkers like being shushed and shushed by a whisper. So that one whisper from last episode that we saw on the ground you know, it opened his eyes and stuff. And even somebody said that one person witnessed that there was a whisper in the back kind of watching. So they're going to lead up to the next episode. And I'm looking forward to it. Um, this episode really, like I said, was very intense. I really liked what I saw back and forth, you know, different storylines going on, but it really meshed. It wasn't really like confusing. You know, and that's good story writing. That's the way you you move a story along. You know, it's like it isn't confusing. It isn't all over the place. It has its purpose and it kind of lines up and kind of comes together. You know, and it's like The Walking Dead. So far, so good. It's really, really good, and I enjoyed it. And so far, no real, like, except for the time the Michonne and her group met with Alexandria and her group, well, not Alexandria, but uh, Alpha and her group. That's the one time so far that they've met up, but never a full on out 
brawl if you if you you know a meet a meeting of the you know of the spears and the cleavers and what whatever they have you know all the you know just fighting you know so so you know we even see in the preview that you know that alpha's like we're gonna deal with them so you know that it's brewing that could even easily be later in the episode later in the season you know even though it's a, a sneak preak of next week but who knows sometimes they do that to kind of throw you off to make you think that's happening but it's not gonna happen to like maybe a few more episodes um down the road but this is my uh you know my review and my thoughts on uh, Season 10, episode four, Silence the Whisperers. And uh, there really was no silencing the Whisperers, you know, that's their intent. Those th- those three wanted to silence someone who I guess used to be a Whisperer, and that's Lydia. And they didn't, they failed in that. But anyway, for those of you who stopped by and checked out my video, thank you very much, I appreciate it. And in closing, and as always, take care.